What's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about five basic electronics components and everything you need to know about them. First up, the resistor. A resistor limits the flow of electricity so we can use this to protect certain electronic components like LEDs from being burned up by receiving too much electricity. Resistor values are measured in ohms, signified by this symbol, with a higher number meaning it resists the flow of electricity more, so less electricity goes through. So this resistor is a 100 ohm resistor and you can see it keeps the LED safe and bright. This 1000 ohm resistor also keeps the LED safe but it reduces the electricity so much that the LED is very dim. But how do we know what the resistance value is on each of these resistors? Well these colored bands tell us that information. Charts like this, I'll have an image link in the description, tell us that a black band means a zero, a brown band means a one, red two, and so on. On a resistor with four bands, the first two bands represent the significant numbers. So here we have a brown one and then a black zero. And the third band represents the multiplier, in this case 10 to the second or 100. So 10 times 100 equals 1000 ohms. Now of course these resistors aren't perfect, so the last band is the tolerance, which in this case is gold or 5%. So this resistor could be anywhere from 950 ohms to 1050 ohms. On this five band resistor, the first three bands represent the significant digits. So we have a red 2, another red, also 2, and a black 0. Then we multiply that by the fourth band, which is black, so 10 to the 0, or 1. So this resistor has a resistance of 220 ohms. And the tolerance band is brown, so the tolerance is plus or minus 1%, meaning the actual resistance will be between 218 and 222 ohms. That's pretty precise, just like you'll have to be pretty precise to hit that subscribe button. The capacitor. A capacitor stores power, kind of like a battery, but rather than storing a lot of electricity for a long time, it stores a little bit of electricity, but it can output that electricity very quickly. So if we connect it to a 9 volt battery, it'll take in some electricity. And if we connect it to an LED, it'll output that electricity very quickly, causing the LED to flash. Let's say we have a device that we never want to turn off. Maybe it's something medical, but it's hooked up to an unstable power source. Well, if we connect a very strong capacitor in parallel with the medical device, anytime the voltage drops off, the excess in the capacitor will be supplied to make up the difference. And if the voltage goes too high, which would normally burn out the device, the capacitor will take the extra power instead. So it'll smooth out the electricity and make it nice and even for the device. Diodes. Diodes are kind of like a one-way gate. They let electricity pass through in one direction, but not the other. So let's say we have a device, maybe a toy, where the batteries need to be swapped out pretty often. It probably won't be long until someone puts in the batteries the wrong way, which could fry our device. Unless we have a diode in place, so that if the batteries are put in backwards, electricity simply doesn't flow, and the circuit can't get damaged. Now, certain diodes actually shine light, so when electricity goes through them, the resistance, or the difficulty of the electricity passing through the diode, generates light. These are called light-emitting diodes, or LEDs for short, and they're the best lighting source we have. They're used all over for light bulbs, phone flashlights, and even TVs that tell people to subscribe so they don't miss out on future electronics videos. Potentiometers. This is a potentiometer. It has three pins, two of which are connected to the ends of the resistive track. The middle pin is connected to the dial, which rotates around on the resistive track. So if we connect the left pin to ground and the right pin to a 5 volt power source, the middle pin will have a varying voltage between 0 volts with the dial rotated all the way to the left and 5 volts with the dial rotated all the way to the right. We could connect this center pin to an LED to change the brightness of the LED using the potentiometer. Transistors. This is a transistor. Like the potentiometer, it has three pins, but instead of having a dial to control the flow of electricity, the central pin controls the flow of electricity, kind of like a switch. If we connect a 5 volt power source to the left pin and an LED to the right pin and ground, we can control whether the LED is on by varying the voltage of the middle pin. If we supply 0 volts, the LED stays off, but if we supply just 1 volt, the LED will be powered by the 5 volt power source through the transistor. I hope you learned a lot about these basic electronic components. Now, check out this video to start on your first project a lightsaber. 